Why is it easier to preserve analog than it is digital? And is that true? This question comes from Bill in Morrisville, North Carolina. This is a cool little board up here in the studio. And this is just something we're playing. It's not, a, not an awfully fancy mixing board, but it's got to start somewhere, right? Uh, Bill writes, I've noticed with both video and audio that they retain the analog look and sound when converted to digital after being recorded in analog first. Both video and audio recorded straight to digital seem to lose the analog look and sound. Am I missing something here, or is it that capturing and recording in the digital domain is harder to do than converting from analog to digital? Does it require higher quality equipment to record straight to digital than most have? This is actually an interesting question, and we, we get it a lot, and there's a lot of confusion on the matter. If you take a tape recorder, an analog tape recorder, or a vinyl disc, and you record, digitally record, the contents off that analog tape or off that digital or the uh, vinyl disc, that digital recording sounds absolutely identical to the original. I mean, it's really hard to tell the difference. Not impossible, and depends on the system, but, and it depends on how you digitally recorded it. But for purposes of this, to answer his question directly, it's, it's pretty remarkable how close you can digitize analog and maintain all of its analogness. And we've talked about this before. One of the reasons is that analog has a very limited dynamic range. Now we're talking about analog recording, not, not analog, not talking into this microphone analog because there you've got, you know, huge dynamic range. Just, just you know, in, in my yapping here is, 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 could be really big, you know, from the tiniest whisper to the loudest voice, right? No, we're talking about previously recorded analog methods, tape or, or vinyl. They have very limited range, maybe 65, 70 dB worth of, of dynamic range, maybe even a little more, where digital has uh, 100 if you're not compressing things, uh, 120, 140, depending on the bit depth. So we have full frequency response, unlimited dynamic range, trying to record something with limited frequency response and limited dynamic range. So it's going, <laughs> not much to this. This is easy stuff, right? And if you do it in the best digital format whatsoever, DSD, now, not only is it indistinguishable, but it's just whatever little nuances of magic were lost with PCM capturing uh, analog, you, you, you even maintain that. The, so that's what's happening. It's, it's not that you can't record something uh, live in, in, um, uh, in digital. Uh, and have it sound good. You can, especially if you use DSD like we will do in our new studio. So we have Gus Skinnis uh, and PS Audio are working together to design a whole new way of, well not a whole new way, but a new recording facility that will uh, bring back great recordings and make it possible for musicians to actually make money uh, servicing they're, they're the people who love their music. It's going to solve a big problem. And the heart of all of that will be based in DSD. Gus has the Sonoma mastering system that he basically owns that was developed by Sony in the first place. And, and it is the finest recording system in the world, bar none. And that whole system is going to be the basis of our recording empire, our big label, if you will. And we'll show you just how analog-like things can sound. So the last thing I'm going <clears> to <throat> bring up, because I, I, I want to make sure I address this question properly for you, because I can see where you're going, which is like, well, wait a minute. A, a, a band or something that has been first recorded with analog tape and then transferred to digital sounds different 
than if that same band were recorded digitally without benefit of the analog tape. And that is because the, that analog sound you're used to is, is this bit of this softening and capturing of things properly that digital, especially PCM, struggles with. It, it's, it's almost hard to describe, but a, a pure PCM recording has a bit of, I don't want to say loneliness to it, but it does. I'm, I, how, how else do I describe it? It doesn't have to be cold, but it typically winds up being that way. And analog adds a warmth to it, which we can talk about later, and which DSD keeps. So here's, here's a better way to put this. If you record in analog, whether it's vinyl, whether it's tape, or DSD, which is as close to analog as you're going to get in the digital domain, if you do that first, then you have captured the essence of analog and the thing you like about analog. If we then transfer tape, vinyl, or DSD to PCM, that's maintained. So there's, there's something about that that we can maintain with PCM, with standard digital recording that we can't capture in the first place. We need to go through this other process, which is why our new label, our new recording studio is all DSD. Sure, we'll make CDs, but those CDs will have run through the DSD process first. And so they'll sound like analog. They'll sound like what you want to hear. I hope that helps. Okay, thanks for the question. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.